When you're programming with Eclipse, sooner or later you're going to need to use the Eclipse debugger. And so I want to walk through some steps in using the debugger. And along the way I'm going to point out a problem that I've run into when I'm using the debugger and how I work around this problem. It's probably not so much a problem with, with Eclipse as it is a feature of Eclipse, but it's a feature that gets in the way of the kind of debugging that you would typically do in, intro, in introductory programming courses. So for starters, I have a program that's got a fraction class that I've written. My fraction class has a numerator and denominator, a couple of constructors, and I've written a fraction tester class where I instantiate a couple fraction objects and call an add method to add the two fractions together, store results in various variables, and then put some of those variables into an array just so that we can take a look at what an array looks like when we're working within the debugger. So typically we begin by setting a breakpoint in part of the code that we want to debug and you just do that on the left hand side of the screen. You can double click a line in this blue margin and it'll put a little dot indicating a breakpoint. You can turn breakpoints on and off by right clicking if you want to keep the, the breakpoint but disable it you can do that as well. But, so I've set a breakpoint on my first line of my tester class so that uh, when I create a new fraction object it should take me into my constructor code that I've written over here and walk me through what's happening so I can see what's going on. So it should happen but it's not what's going to happen the first time I try it. So <clears throat> to, to begin with the debugger, you set the breakpoint, and then you click the debug button. It looks like a little bug. Notice the perspective of my screen changes. I'm now using the debug perspective instead of the Java perspective. It will jump back and forth. When I'm done debugging, it should jump back to the Java perspective. So <clears throat> since I set a breakpoint on this first line of my tester class, the program has stopped there, and it's waiting for instructions for me to move forward. So this line that's highlighted in green has not happened yet. So the fraction object has not been created yet. So I typically like to click step into if I want to evaluate a line of code and that should take me into whatever is being done on that line. So for example, since this is calling the fraction constructor, step into ought to take me directly into my fraction constructor and here's where you're going to see things go wrong. I get this um, class not found exception throughout my code and I could there are ways to just step through all of that but I would really like to not have these things come up as I'm debugging so let me stop the debugger show you how to fix this in your preferences and then once you fixed it hopefully you won't see it again in the rest of your programming so I stop the debugger and under my preferences, and this is preferences in Windows, but under a Mac it's similar. The preferences are under a different menu item. Under Window, I'm going to choose Preferences and then Java. So here are the Java pre preferences, and then under Debug, and then under Step Filtering, that's where I'm going to make some changes to my code. You should check the box that says Use Step Filters and I'm going to check all of the boxes here. I'm basically saying I don't want to step through code in any of these things so it will keep me from jumping into um, debugging things that I don't care to debug. I just want to debug my code. I don't feel like taking a look inside any of this other code. And after I click OK return to my code. Let's look back at the Java perspective. We'll try the debugger one last time, one more time. Okay, so same situation. It's highlighting this first line of code. I'm going to choose step into and notice that this time it takes me to my fraction constructor which is what I was hoping for. And you can see once you're inside a constructor you can keep an eye on the object that's being constructed. Here is my the, the current fraction object that I'm constructing. It has an, a denominator and numerator instance variables. Those have not yet been assigned values. 
this numerator and denominator, these two are the parameters that were passed in from my tester class, and the job of this constructor is to assign 3 to the numerator instance variable and 4 to the denominator instance variable. So stepping into should walk me through the lines of code that do that. So remember, highlighted in green means it has not done that line of code yet, so if I step into, I should find that the numerator instance variable, which flashed in yellow there for just a minute, now has the value 3 from the numerator parameter, and then again, same thing for the denominator. One more step, I've reached the end of my constructor, so one more step should take me back to my tester class. The new object has been created, I step into to finish that line of code, and now f gets whatever was uh, produced by that constructor. So I can now look and see that my f variable refers to a fraction whose denominator instance variable is 4, and numerator is 3, and it works well. Now here's another line of code that creates another fraction object. And if you're not really interested in watching the constructor do its work, for example, if you're confident that your constructor is working correctly, then instead of choosing step into, you can choose step over. Step over will execute that line of code, but it won't actually go into the line of code to watch what's happening. So let's figure that my second constructor, constructor is working correctly and just step over this line of code. And we can check. Here is the second constructor, the result of the second constructor, and I can see that my fraction variable g refers to a fraction with numerator 1, denominator 5, so that seems to be working all right. Now let's take a look at what happens as I create and work with arrays. When I step into this next line of code, it should create a fraction array variable along with a fraction array that holds five fraction references. So let's step into that and take a look at what we get. Here's my fractions, and we can see that the positions in that array, let's give ourselves a little more room to look. My fractions now refers to an array containing five null fraction reference variables. So things seem to be working well. <clears throat> step into my next line of code. So this next line of code attempts to add my fraction g to my fraction f by calling f's add method. So let's step into that and we can actually watch what's happening. So looking at step into, I can see that my add method is, is now doing its work. This refers to the fraction that actually called the method, which is the fraction whose numerator and denominator were 3 and 4. And my parameter, that, is also a fraction. And I can see that that fraction has a numerator 1 and denominator 5. So I'm about to add 3 fourths and 1 fifth. Along the way, there's some nice things that you can do in Eclipse. For example, if there's an, uh, uh, an expression whose value is important to you. For example, perhaps this dot numerator times that dot denominator is an important expression. You can highlight an expression and it will tell you the value of that expression by choosing watch. And I can look. Now I have a, a new tab up here in my debugging area where it tells me the value of the expression this dot numerator times that dot denominator is equal to 15. Not necessarily a value I care about in this situation, but it's, it's nice to know that it's easy to do that. You can also add your own expressions by typing them in. So for example, this dot numerator times 10. And, and it will keep track of that value as you work. Right now I'm more interested just in what's happening here in the method. So We'll choose step into and watch this calculation actually take place a piece at a time. And then when it's done, it will move on to the next line. And I can check to see what value num just got, and it is 19. 
Does that make sense? Well, it was numerator times denominator plus the other numerator times denominator, and I think that's right. Let's see. Numerator times denominator is 15. Numerator times denominator is 4. The value is 19, and there it is. That's what's stored in num. That will turn out to be the numerator of my uh, fraction, the numerator of the sum of the two fractions. And then step again and it will compute the denominator of the sum. And then this next line of code, notice is going to create a new fraction called sum, which it eventually returns. And that fraction, it's going to call the fractions constructor. And so when I step into that, I should find myself inside the constructor for the fraction. And so now it's taking the numerator and denominator from the sum, 19 and 20, creating a new fraction. If I'm not interested in watching this uh, constructor do its work, there's the step return, which just quickly completes whatever method I'm in right, right at that time, or whatever constructor, and moves back to wherever it was called. So let's click step return. Now that the new fraction has been created, we can step into one more time, and the sum fraction object right here and we're almost done here now there's a method called simplify that uh, is going to get called I'm not interested in watching the simplify method do its work so I'm going to simply step over that line so that it can do its work without me having to watch the debugging process and in this case simplify isn't going to change my fraction it's still 19 over 20 and then when it's finished, this method returns the sum. So finishing up this line of code here, sum is now going to be, notice that this is a sum local variable in the main method in my tester class, different than the sum variable that was used in the uh, add method in the fraction class. Step into, and we should now find that I have a sum fraction object, and when I look at it, not surprisingly, it has a numerator and denominator of 19 twentieths. I could go back and look at that expression and see what's going on. Notice that expressions, th these expressions are only relevant when we're inside the fraction class. Right now, they have no relevance outside of that class, so we can see that there are, these error messages don't really mean errors, it just means the results aren't something that can be calculated right now. So we're almost done here. We've got three fraction objects that we created. F and G were the fractions that we added. Sum is the fraction that we got from the sum of F and G. And we're just going to put those inside, those variables inside the array so that the array, three spots in the array will now refer to it. I just want you to get a chance to see what happens in the array as we do lines of code like this. So we'll step into and notice that fraction F, which referred to our 3 fourths fraction, now we have my fraction 0 also refers to that. And we can take a look at this and see that whereas before we had five null references in our array, now we have one fraction object actually being referred to by spot 0 of the array. So it's that same fraction that's referred to by the variable f. Similarly, we'll step into the next line, and now fraction 1 in that array is the 1 fifths fraction. And one more assignment will take the sum and assign it to the last spot in the array. And there it is. So it's kind of nice. Once an array has elements in it instead of null, you, if those things are objects, you can actually expand each one and watch what's going on. And finally, here's a line of code that turns one of my fractions, this particular fraction, into a nice looking string. Not interested in watching this method do its work. If, there, if I knew there was an error in it, then yes, I'd be interested, but let's just do a step over 
and the results should show up in my console down here. There they are, 1920ths. So once you're finished debugging, or even if you're in the middle of debugging and you decide you don't need to debug anymore, there's a stop button. Looks like a VCR stop button. You just click the stop button and that ends the debugging process. And you can switch back to the Java perspective and I'm done debugging.